And a very good day to you, or evening, or morning, whenever you happen to catch this. Uh, Jason Hawes back once again. I suppose I could say finally back once again on American Faith Today after, yes, yes, I know, another hiatus of sorts. But it is good to be back, and more importantly than that, it is, as always, great, fantastic to have you listening. And to be here with you and have you here with me. And and I'll tell you, I'm not an excitable guy as a whole. I'm not overly excitable. I'm not, let's get pumped up and everything like that. Let's go knock somebody's head off on the football field. And uh, But but I am excited, so I'm, I'm excited and pumped up to be back. So, hooray! Sound convincing? Probably not. And, and believe me, there's no confetti, no streamers, no... No kazoos blowing. I, I don't. I don't think I have a, a kazoo sound effect. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm not gonna worry because there's too much to try to cover to worry about the sound effects that I have here. But in all seriousness, I I am glad to be back. And because I foolishly always try to have way more on hand and way more to try to cover than I could ever, as a rule, possibly cover in 45 minutes and do it justice. Um, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time making small talk or self-deprecating humor or any kind of humor, although humor in some senses maybe does make the world go round or lighten our day and so forth, but um, uh, but I do want to get to the point as well. I can tell you, though, just, just briefly, that unfortunately for the past month or two, or from basically June and, and July, I was car shopping. And that's where I was spending, that's what I was spending my free time on, was trying to find a car, as unfortunately, my personal and work vehicle was totaled. It wasn't my fault this time. I, I can say, uh, well, I don't even want to, uh, I don't even want to make a joke about that, even though there's no harm in it. But uh, I, I can do solemnly swear that it was not my fault. Uh, and it, it's not the first time that a car was totaled that it wasn't my fault, but unfortunately there has been a time or two that uh, sometimes I feel like I really need a different job. <laughs> I just do. But uh, there are some perks to what I do as well, and uh, one of those was that I had a, a good deal on a car basically fall into my lap through through work, and, and so it is, and I'm back on the road and hopefully, well, I don't know how many of these I'll do and how frequently I'll be able to do these in the future, but hopefully getting back to doing more of these as well in the in the foreseeable future at a, at a little, little bit more uh, uh, consistent and frequent rate. But, uh, but anyway, uh, so that's, that's what I've been busy with for the most part. And like I said, it is good to be back. Now, there's a couple different ways that I could go with this. I've got, I've basically collected everything. And again, I am so picky when it comes to these podcasts. I am so self-critical. I, I always try to, while I'm, I'm watching the time like a hawk here, and it's probably still going to be a moot point, because like I said, I know I won't get everything in and probably do it justice. But I've stopped and restarted these a couple, three times now. And, uh... Along with that, though, I guess it's given me pretty good practice to hopefully deliver a good, engaging podcast for you. Now, a couple different ways I thought about going with this. 
And of course, everyone has a title. And I, I'm titling it, While the People Slept. Or While the People Were Asleep. I'll just say, While the People Slept. And there are a couple of different ways to look at that. Certainly, for those of us who are Christians, you have going to sleep or falling asleep as a watchman in the end times, which is never good. But really, this is going to have more to do. I, I am going to try to incorporate, hopefully if time allows, some scripture, just because we got to look at the bright side of things, and we got to get our focus and our faith on where it needs to be, and on looking up and looking to God, and certainly not man. Uh, because uh, what I've got is I've got some stories here that, quite frankly, you're not going to hear these stories, for the most part, in the media. You're not going to hear these stories being talked about by Rush Limbaugh, by Sean Hannity, by Glenn Beck, and uh, by any right-wing conservative talk show host. Certainly not going to see or hear them on Fox News. Uh, Now, they may be mentioned, but they're not going to be covered. And... The whole point of this is I, I can go back to even a store, a poem, excuse me, a poem that I became familiar with uh, roughly, I don't know, 20 years ago, thereabouts. And that poem uh, is titled either The Ghost of Valley Forge or The Gro- Ghost from Valley Forge. I don't know if it matters much either way. Um, you, can, you can try to Google that, Ghost of Valley Forge, Gr- Ghost from Valley Forge poem. Um, however you find the, get the hit on the, on the web search. But um, the background of that, ironically enough, the author or narrator goes to sleep, and he has a dream. And in his dream, he's visited by a soldier from the Revolutionary War who goes on to explain to him rather somberly and soberly that Everything that they fought for is going away. Every freedom, every liberty that they tried to secure is being being taken away by our government, by the people who control our government, and our politicians. And there's a line in it that goes something to the effect of tyrants labored endlessly while your parents were asleep. And so it is. And so the stories that I have to cover, like I said, this is one reason why I want to get into Scripture, if time allows, because are they happy stories? Absolutely not. But at the same time, I believe they are necessary stories. Because there are too many people who, quite frankly, are willing to fall asleep and stay asleep. And sometimes maybe that is as it should be. And maybe sometimes that is something that even I must accept myself. That there are some that, as sad as it is, as sad as it is, excuse me, as frustrating as it is, that are just destined and meant to be asleep uh, for whatever the reason. And and uh, but it is sad and it is frustrating. And so even in sharing things like this, many times it is either preaching to the choir or it is uh, talking to a wall, so to speak, where maybe someone will listen, maybe be vaguely curious, but but it won't take. And like I said, uh, as somebody that that witnesses that, it, it, it is very sad. But so it is. But I want to I want to focus on some stories here. And I want to focus on a couple of things. I want to focus on the real story, I believe, with the economy. And I want to focus on some stories that I'll guarantee you, with the exception of maybe some of the stuff with guns, are pretty much completely under the radar and pretty much completely covered up. So, But but let's break this down, if we shall. And, and let's start a little bit with the economy, because, you know, it's interesting to me that I still see people who say, well, you know, Donald Trump isn't perfect, but he's doing some, some good things or some very good things for Americans. And, and sometimes I, I just have to, again, shake my head, and, and I, sometimes I just want to ask, and, and ask honestly, without trying to offend, but, but what do you believe he's doing or has done that is good. 
And many would probably say, uh, among other things, the economy. And, uh, you know, first of all, without getting deep into it, again, for time's sake, presidents do not have that much control over the economy. They really do not. And even as much as we had a recession in 2007, 2008, and we've had a recovery since then, uh, you know, it was already back on the upward swing, if you want to look at it that way or believe it in that sense, when Trump took office. And nothing has dramatically improved. It's just basically continued along the same pace since he took office. And at the same time, the government's accounting methods are always going to give as rosy a picture as they can for the government and how they're doing in terms of GDP, in terms of unemployment. And I know that's what we've been conditioned to to look at when it comes to the economy. But understand that that's the government figuring out, the, giving them their own, giving themselves their own scorecard, and using their own accounting methods to let us know how they're doing. And uh, you, you know, you've got the guy from Shadow Stats, who uh, I believe that's the website. Website, excuse me, ShadowStats.com, who uh, Trump referred to at least once on his uh, campaign trail back in 16, 16 election, who during the time in which even though Obama had, or the unemployment rate was down to 5, 6%, whatever, and Shadow Stat said it was 20% or over 20%, well, guess what? I, I've checked, not regularly, but as the unemployment rate continued to drop, supposedly under Trump, you can go there and it was still over 20% according to shadow stats so uh, uh, and keep in mind too there's a website altmarket.com alt-market.com that uh, and there's a a author a writer there brandon smith who i've shared some of his stuff a couple of times now and i've i've said i think he is on it as much as anybody probably in terms of the big picture and uh there's an article I believe I shared it on the Facebook page. I'll share it again. That He writes, this is the same pattern the Fed followed before the Great Depression. And the point is that it is the Federal Reserve that basically controls monetary policy and the economy. And the Fed has been, for as long as the Fed has been in existence, they have uh, basically allowed for easy money, created bubbles, and then after those bubbles are created, after a while... They tighten uh, the liquidity up. They sell off assets from their own balance sheets. sheets, excuse me, And they pop the bubble. They deflate the bubble that they themselves created. They did it before the Great Depression. They did it before what some have called the Great Recession of 2007-2008. And yes, they're doing it right now. But I want to reference as well... And I, I've made reference, and I've used this guy for some time, uh, Michael Snyder, economiccollapseblog.com. He is a conservative. He, he did, I believe, actually vote for Donald Trump. He ran for Congress um, either last election or in 16. He, he was not elected. But he writes, has an article, Middle Class Death Spiral, Consumers Have Never Been in More Debt, and Bankruptcies Are Surging. And again, you've got people that, have said are saying and have continued to say this is such a great economy we have a booming economy well if we have a booming economy why are consumers in more debt than ever why are bankruptcy surging personal responsibility inability to, to manage money no doubt that's part but when it becomes an epidemic then things are not as rosy as they would seem um and so it is. Again, but he writes, this wasn't supposed to happen. During the relatively or relative economic stability of the past few years, the middle class was supposed to experience a resurgence, but instead has just continued to be hollowed out. The cost of living has risen much faster than wages have, and as a result, and again, there's part of it, a large part of it as well. As a result, hardworking families all over America are being stretched financially like never before.